Okay, in this brief tutorial, I'm going to walk you through using Google Scholar to find scholarly articles. I already happen to have Google Scholar opened um, on my page right here, but if obviously you don't have it open, just go to regular Google and type in Google Scholar and you'll find it that way. Now I'm interested in exploring the topic of digital literacy, and I am only looking for scholarly articles, which is why I'm in Google Scholar instead of just Google. Okay, and it's starting to pop up as I typed in digital. Uh, some possibilities here, which is, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, now what I want to do is only find recent articles. So I'm going to this custom range. Ordinarily, what Google Scholar would do is pull up articles that have been cited the most often. So if you put in a custom range, that will help uh, limit your search and help you get more contemporary articles. Click search and some articles are now beginning to pop up. You'll notice their dates of publication are all after 210 and the ones here on the right where you're seeing PDFs, that's a good sign. It means when we click on those articles we'll get the full text. So of course what we would do is read these short abstracts and see if they seem relevant. Uh, this one's a book so that's why we're not getting access to the whole text, but if it looked good, you could obviously get it from a university library, possibly. Okay, I'm continuing to look through. I'm go also going to be paying attention to the journals in which the articles appeared and uh, get a feel that way. So this one appeared 212 in a journal called Computers and Education. And I'm looking at the abstract, the little bit that I have here, and I am going to click here and see what the article looks like. Okay, um, the article of course is beginning. I would skim it on my screen. Here again is the abstract. And this one has to do with teaching digital natives digital literacy. Okay, and what you're going to see in many of these articles are citations to um, other scholars in the field starting right here down here. So be prepared to see those citations. Um, and this is why they're scholarly articles. Okay, this does look like an article that I would want to use for my research. So again, I would either print it or I would uh, download it, whatever the case might be. If I'm on my own computer, I might want to download it. If I'm not, um, then I might want to print it if I'm hooked up to a printer. Okay, let me go back. Um, and you also, let me go back and uh, pull up another one that looks like it could be relevant. Okay, I am really trying to look for very recent articles that are really published as recently as possible. This one's, uh, let's see, 211, 213. I'm going to pop this one up. I actually do know the author of this article. Um, and the title has to do with digital storytelling. And Jason Aller, who's the author, is uh, very famous in that field. I popped it up in a different format this time. Okay. Um, you might have noticed I clicked uh, to the left this time instead of clicking on where it said PDF. And you're seeing it's highlighting the key terms that were being used digital. Okay. And this does look like something I could use. And I would have various options um, in terms of um, accessing. This happens to be in a book, in fact, which is quite amazing that I was able to pull it up online. And it looks like a good portion of the book is here. Okay. Um, perhaps, and sometimes when a book pops up, you might not get the whole book. Okay, let's go back here, and I'm going to try one more. Now, notice what I had done with that one is I clicked right here. It did tell me it was a book. Okay, but it did let me know it would be available as well. Okay, I'm going to try one more. Um, and trying to get as many as recent as possible. Okay, uh, let's, this is a 212. Let's take a look at what that is. Okay, that one is not going to work for us. I'm glad that popped up to show you. Okay. Uh, okay, and of course we could go to the next page. But what I also want to point out is there are other terms down here that would be very useful if you wanted to do another search, so pay attention to those as well. Let me click on the next button and see if we come up with something else. 
Um, this is written by Troy Hicks, another person I'm familiar with in the field. Uh, and also you have this opportunity here for related articles. Let's see what happens when we click here. Okay, so I'm reading this article. Um, to, to authors. Um, this looks excellent. Look at the title of it. It's perfect for what I think I need. So I have the option to download it or to print it. Okay, I'm not going to take the time to do either right now. Now, if you didn't want to download it or print it, um, you could also take note of the author, the name of the article, and the name of the journal and go into your own university's database and access it that way. And in that case, you might be able to send it to yourself so you can continue to read it on the screen. So I hope that gives you a feel for using Google Scholar. Um, obviously, if you're doing university research, um, you shouldn't be searching on just Google. You should be using something like Google Scholar. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. And again, I want to remind people about using the custom range feature. And you also have the option to sort by relevance or sort by date. So let's try sort by date. And what you'll see now is sorting by the last articles that were written. This is a 217 one. So that's something else to keep in mind. And I invite you um, to explore using Google Scholar.